Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right, welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I'm Coach David Syverson. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. And we both just got done with our Sunday morning training session. Uh, I'm not going to talk to Sam about his workout so that he doesn't get mad at me as we start off it th sucked. <laughs> this wonderful podcast this morning. Um, we just wrapped up the 2024 CrossFit Open. And next week, we are going to kind of reflect on the Open, the workouts, the overall program, macro, micro, and then what you can do, what you can take from that Open into your next 11 months of training if the open is a goal for yours, which, you know, we are pretty adamant that it should be at least some, at least a little voice in your head throughout the year in terms of planning out for your goals, the 2025 cross it open. So we will kind of help you guide you in terms of what to take from the open in your training. But I want to get something out there first. And that is in regard to the CrossFit quarterfinals. We are essentially three and a half weeks away. If I have my dates correct, uh, when this comes out, and I want to talk about how to prepare for the quarterfinals. And I think it's really important um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, there are a lot of people that are doing this for the first time because the CrossFit HQ expanded quarterfinals from 10% to 25%. Um, and pretty much... Last year, we had 24 people. This year, we have at CrossFit Bison 73 athletes oh that qualified for quarters. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I know for a fact not all of them will be doing it. A, f a few have already told me they won't be doing it. Um, but you are talking about times three. The amount of people that qualified as, as times three in just this gym alone. So the vast majority of these athletes, 50 plus, right, have never, have never done this before. And... I'm the one telling them, some of them, hey, you made it. And they're like, wait, what? What did I make? Wait, what is it? <laughs> so, you know, with that, I have gotten a lot of questions already. What do I do? How do I get ready? What should I do? Should I do extra workouts? Should I do two days? Like, should I work on my muscle ups? Should I my pistols and heavy lifting? Um, I, I, I want to make sure that we don't get overwhelmed by it. So I'm just going to give some pretty clear cut what to expect, what you can do, what you should do, what you should not do um, in the next three, three and a half weeks preparing. So, Sam, this is your... Let's see if I can do the math real quick. I think this is your fifth yep. next stage that you made. So it used to be the age online qualifier. Yeah. Then it turned into quarterfinals. No matter what, you've been in it five years in a row. Ooh. I made it uh, by the skin of my teeth this year again. So uh, That's by the way. Congrats. Thanks. Same to you. Uh, I think you were, what, top, uh, what, 200 this year? Right, right around it. Yeah. Right around it. In the yeah. world. So that's pretty impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you mean I'm going to have to learn how to handstand walk in the next three weeks? Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. You're going to have to give me some guidance on that one. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, th this could this could go in so many different directions, and I want to try and not to because it's an overwhelming concept for a lot of people to take in. And so I'm really going to kind of take you step by step what I think you can do. Now, hey, if you're listening and you haven't made quarterfinals, there's two things you can do with this, all right? One, maybe you will someday. Maybe you want to someday. And the sooner you get this information into your head, the better. Two, you might have some friends that are have made quarterfinals, and you're going to try to support them, or people from your gym or your coach, right? People that you know take this serious and they want to put a lot into it. I think as a friend, as a community member, it helps you help them to know what's going on in their head and what's coming their way. Uh, because if you're on the outside of it and you don't care that much or just haven't really put a lot of attention on it, you might view this as like, hey, this is not a big deal. To some, this is a very big deal. I promise you, discussions I've had over the past few years, this weekend is, in the CrossFit calendar, the biggest deal to a lot of people. This is like, this is their World Series. This is it. This is what they've trained for, for 11 months. So I think it's really important for you to be cognizant of what's coming their way. And then, frankly, you might sign up for a competition, a local comp someday, what I'm going to tell these quarterfinalists to do in the next three and a half weeks is very similar to what I would tell someone that's a month away from their first ever CrossFit competition. So there's a lot you can take away from this. So number one, what is your goal, athlete? What is your goal? Are you here to have fun? This was the goal. I wanted to make quarterfinals. 
do you have a certain threshold? Are you trying to hit top 100, top 200, top half, top 25% of this group, whatever? Are you trying to make semifinals? You need to know that answer um, yesterday. I don't want you to think about it for a week or two. You need to think. You need to know it yesterday. That's a way of no of saying you need to already know. So right now, if you're listening to this, if you're a quarterfinalist and you have no idea what your goal is to get out of quarterfinals, figure it out ASAP because that is going to dictate pretty much every answer to every question I'm going to ask you within this podcast. So let's talk because Sam and I, I think. You know, I, I think that it would be smart for us to reflect on our answers to these questions, okay, so that those out there can, you know, get that perspective and it might help shape theirs if they don't know. Sam, what is your goal for quarterfinals? My goal is not your goal for sure. <laughs> uh, my guess would be your goal is to make semis. Mine is, first of all, I just am recovering right now from doing the open for three weeks. That was stressful. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. I, I forgot how bad five weeks was because even three weeks now is rough. Like the adrenaline, the th- thinking about it, the worry, the really pushing myself, optimizing myself for that workout. After the third workout, I was just like, whoo. And I just took like a big step back. Mm-hmm. And just even now thinking about quarterfinals, I'm like, oh my God, like that's coming up. And I was like, that's... that." I, do I even want to think about it right now? And I'm like, all right, I'll start thinking. But for me, every year, quarterfinals has been, um, these have been really challenging tests. Yeah. I mean, tests that have been sometimes beyond my physical capability. And so I realize that I don't have designs, other than maybe the first year I was doing it, mm-hmm. um, I don't have designs in making it farther. Okay. Uh, or further. I can't remember which one is the right way to say it, but I will say- You're just talking to a CrossFit coach. I'll I'll believe whatever you say, doctor. (laughs) Um, I do want to enjoy myself. Yeah. I want to stay safe. Yep. uh, And I want to test myself because sometimes I have surprised myself on some of these workouts Mm -hmm. and been like, I did a lot better than I thought I was going to do. Yeah. And so I feel like, um, especially this year more than any other, I'm going to see some things that I hope will be in my wheelhouse that I can really challenge myself or do something that I haven't done before. Because, you know, after a couple of years, you kind of figure out some stuff a little bit. And and maybe I can, uh, you know, uh, make myself proud a little mm-hmm. bit. So S- Sam's in that state, <clears throat> state of mind um, and situation within the sport that, you know, out of the 73 people in our gym, I would say 60 plus are in that spot where they don't really have the the goal of advancing to the semifinal or games level. All right. That again, got realistically, there's probably only 2% of people that are in quarterfinals that have a credible shot at that. So what do you do? And I think, I think what he said is perfect. Make it a goal to do all the workouts. Yeah. So A, don't get hurt. Yeah. Right. Um, and we'll talk about how to do that, how to avoid that. But B, if you get all, if you get to do all these quarterfinal workouts, that means you are a fit m- mother effer. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at some of the history of quarterfinal workouts, there are multiple where the first rep of that workout, a lot of people cannot do. Mm-hmm. Um, this year is different in that the age group workouts, masters and teens, are the same workouts as the open division. So. The workouts that Tia is doing to make it to the semifinals, we're doing, <laughs> you know, and it, it it is crazy. Um, and I don't like I don't ever want to put pressure on personal relationships that I have with people that are in CrossFit that already know what the workouts are. Um, and I would never want to ask them something that is not already publicly out there. I just I would never a that's cheating, and b I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. So one thing I did find out that is out there, Dave Castro was on Savon last night, was saying the same exact thing. Boz has said this in the past. Mm-hmm. But maybe you guys haven't listened, so here you go. I was told that the workouts are going to be affiliate friendly. Good. And they can be done in class settings. Great. All right. So that does to me, there are a few things in that that make me think we won't see. A GHD sit up. Rope climb maybe, but I'm thinking about affiliates that have classes. Um, there just won't be that many gyms that can do that. So don't take my word for it. But those are a couple of things that if you really understand logistics, mapping things out, multiple people in a class in a gym doing the same workout, um, 
I think you can start to kind of get a picture of what won't be, you know, in, in the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to keep in mind what I just said earlier. Tia is doing these workouts at the semis. CrossFit wants Tia in the semifinals. They can't. I, I just told Rams in this. I'd be stressed out programming these because I wouldn't want to make it so affiliate friendly that some, you know, 10 percenter somehow got in front of the top 1% because it wasn't heavy enough. It wasn't high skilled enough. So I think one thing programming wise to expect, and I'm going to tie this back to, can you get all these done is there's probably going to be multiple workouts where the difficulty aggressively ascends in the workout. Meaning like a cutoff, a cutoff or it starts at this weight Mm -hmm. and then it goes to that weight. Mm -hmm. And most of us can't do that weight. Did you see that where the 10 percenters went above the games athletes and the open workouts? Um, there were a few, right? There were a few. There were a few high like scorers out yeah. there that were, and I think the athletes took it a little less seriously. Yeah. I think part of it is not every games athlete goes after these open workouts with full aggression. But they have to for these quarterfinals. For quarterfinals, there's a lot less margin. Like that, yeah. You're at the right. They have to peak basically yeah. at quarterfinals. Yeah. The the top of the top can probably peak at semifinals. Um, like a Noah Olson. I remember last year he did all the quarterfinal workouts within a twenty four hour period and has still won first place. Mm-hmm. Um so to me that's not peaking. That's just like he's just really fit. But mm-hmm. yeah, if you're kind of like a on the bubble semifinalist or an on the bubble even games athlete that is expected to make semis, mm-hmm. um, there needs to be workouts that where they get they separate themselves. Mm-hmm. And the best way to separate themselves, in my opinion, is you ascend weights deeper into the workout to the point where a lot of us just can't do it anymore. Um, you ascend gymnastics throughout the workout. So you start off with pull-ups, chest bar, ring muscle-ups, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or handstand push-ups, strict handstand push-ups, wall-facing handstand push-ups. Mm-hmm. Or ascending reps. That That is something that I've always noticed over the year. The best athletes, like let's say it's, uh, let's create a workout, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Strict handstand push-ups, heavy deadlifts. Mm-hmm. Where we can all start it. You yeah, know, but right. you get to that set of nine, 12, 15, we're all like, okay, one or two at a time, they're they're unbroken still. So th- those are things I think we can expect to see, and I think that is going to tie into we will likely have a larger capability of doing all these workouts. Or at least starting them. Yeah, well, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> right. I mean, we've seen this in the past, Sam. I, I don't know if you remember, there have been multiple quarterfinal workouts where – it started off with a 185, 125 snatch. Yeah, or and, overhead squat. Yeah, overhead squat. Yeah. yeah. And with, people just can't do it. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I think a strength lift one year was an overhead squat. We had some athletes in this gym that can't overhead squat literally right. at all. So they didn't get to do the workout. Then they're like, oh, screw this, I'm out. Or you know, they run the risk of getting seriously hurt. Mm. So I think that's a great goal to, like, hey, can you do all these workouts? Another reason why I like that workout or like that uh, goal, Yeah, it, in my opinion, the quarterfinal workouts are going to give you a much more accurate standing on where you, you stand in the sport. I see. Open, kind of, yeah. but the, the credibility of these tests with these judges, with this difficulty, yeah. I think you're going to get a really good gauge, and I, and I really want people that are in quarterfinals to, to get that. What is your goal in uh, in quarters? So. My my goal would be make semifinals. So I think most age groups, I think it's top two hundred in the world, yes. advance to the next stage. Yeah. And you got a shot. I got a shot, which um adds a layer of stress to it. And there's gonna be a few people in the gym that net need to do this. And this is what I'm gonna get into on the next part um of prepping for quarterfinals. Okay. Mapping out your week. Okay. okay. By that week. Yep. And I'll I'll tie into yeah, if you're pursuing semifinals, this is gonna be pretty important. Okay. So what is this week like, everyone? We, I believe, I actually don't know this for a fact, but in the past, we get the workouts on Monday. Mm-hmm. Or we used to get floor plans. Is it Wednesday or Monday that we're going to get these? Well, we got the floor plans on Mondays, and then they would release the workouts Wednesday. So it's possible we won't see the workouts till Wednesday. I see. It used to be Thursday. So they're giving us a, a, a day early. Okay. Okay? And now they're saying the date ends on Monday. Okay. So that's an extra day. So this is now two extra days of quarterfinals. Ooh. Okay. Um, and I think the first most important thing that people need to know, especially if you're at a gym where a lot of people have qualified, you need to figure out with your coach, with the owner of the gym, what is the schedule going to be? Because as many people ha- have advanced to quarterfinals, the gym's still operating. 
you know, we still have classes. The vast majority of this gym did not qualify. We're not going to push them to the side because you made quarterfinals. Um, so that that needs to be kind of put out there. If you're an owner and a coach or you're in charge of that stuff, you need to get that stuff out ASAP because especially dealing with people that have kids, they need to know now what their schedule is going to be like. And jobs. Yeah, I, exactly, jobs. So let's let's pretend we know this just based on history. There's probably going to be five workouts, maybe six because of the extra day. Um, it's likely they're going to give submission windows, meaning you have to have the first two workouts done but for example, by Friday noon or by, let's say, Thursday night. And then you have to have the next two workouts done by Saturday night and then the next two workouts done by Monday night. That is what my guess would be mm-hmm. for the quarterfinal period. Mm-hmm. Maybe that won't be the case. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But now that you know that, I think you as an athlete, you need to figure out in that five-day window how to get to the gym f- probably four days. Now, can you just show up whenever you want? You can't. Why? Because you need an actual registered judge. So here at Bison, we're telling these guys tonight on our Zoom call that made it, if you want to participate in quarterfinals, you have to pass the judge's course. And it's not for any reason other than we got to help each other out. We don't have enough people in this gym that can judge 73 athletes, six workouts. That's uh, that's over 300 workouts that need to be judged. You're also creating some buy-in on the athletes. Yeah, yeah. So you're forcing the ones that may not be as committed because it takes about ninety minutes, maybe somewhere between. It can, it. it can be done in an hour. I have been the top, but yeah, let, assume ninety minutes if you break it. I up. was slow. I yeah. couldn't figure out the double under, <laughs> so it took me a little longer. But yes, somewhere around at least an hour uh, of your life and ten dollars. Yep, and quarterfinals is fifty dollars. So this is yeah, what Sam said. There, there's going to be buy into this. Um, so once you get that set up. You have to figure out when is the gym going to be open for you to do your workouts. I've already had someone had asked me, can I come in and do these workouts during my, five, my normal 5, 6 a.m.? Mm. The answer is a hard no. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. I genuinely am sorry. But we that can't happen. Well, we have like 30 people per class in the morning. Yeah. And it's just like we don't know what you need. You need to get a judge. What if you need all the space? And this is where, as an owner, this gets really tough. You know, you, you can't put these people that – quote are you know the best athletes in the room on a pedestal to the point where everyone else is getting pushed to the side like I would be really uncomfortable if a class of 30 was working in the front corner so that I could have the back side of the gym so I could do shuttle runs for my quarterfinals that I'm not even trying to qualify for semifinals for you know that this gets really that it, it does get sensitive um so find that out and then you if you have a job if you have kids if you have both don't wait till the week of. Like, start lining this stuff up now um, so that you can just focus on the workouts. Because I've made this mistake in the past where you're trying to figure out this stuff on the fly and also warm up, also work out, also judge the heat after you. And you actually will, will perform worse and would increase your odds of getting hurt. Agreed. All right? Yeah. Um, another, other things to consider. Are you going to repeat any of these I would say don't unless you are trying to qualify for the next stage and you really think you're that close and you really think you need those extra reps. How many have you repeated in the past for quarters? I've only repeated uh, only one. And it was funny. It was, a, it was a workout. I did it in the, at uh, 8.45. Then I came back at 2 o'clock and did it again. And you got better? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, I just, yeah, I screwed something up. And again, that was like a logistical, I just screwed something up pacing-wise and I fixed it. So and that was actually in between classes. So 8.45 was oh, yeah. after the last morning class. Oh, yeah. And then 2.45 was before yeah. the afternoon classes. So you fit your schedule around the class schedule. Yep. Yep. You have to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I, if that's that's the stuff you got. And I here's another thing. I I lined up. My brother came and did my taping for me. Alan G was here. Alan G is the superstar of this place mm-hmm. when we need some help. Um, he came and judged me. I think it was him that came and judged me. So- but, you know, your friends, th- there's a big, big part of the quarterfinals that I love where there's like a crew of people that they train together throughout the year, open gym, the same classes, they both made it, they push each other. I'm all about trying to get to do these workouts next to each other. Yeah. I really am. I, I, and if we can make it happen, we will. I yeah. can't guarantee it because of equipment. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you can just line all, all that stuff up, um, it helps. A rest day. 
I was talking to Kevin Yurchek about this. He was like, yeah, you know, Saturdays are really tough for us. Like, I don't know what we should do. I'm like, bro, you, you're you gonna you're not going to work out for five days straight. There's probably going to be a day where you're going to do two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, pick, I think some all of us should pick at least a day in the middle somewhere where it's a, it's a rest day. Mm. So if you can bang out like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, take off Saturday, it's Sunday, Monday, let's do it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, or, you know, you do you go all the way through Saturday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you wait until Sunday, Monday to see how you feel. Like if you're beat beat up Sunday or your hands are ripped up Sunday, wait till Monday to do the last one. Mm-hmm. Though those th- I would just try to line those things up now, um, ASAP. It, you know, without knowing the programming, it's really hard to gauge like how your hands are going to feel, how your th- quads are going to feel, what where's the lift at. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's kind of what I, I would do that now is just kind of line up your logistics as best as possible. All right, so we've. what is your goal and what is your schedule logistics going to look like? Now, here here's the most important part of this podcast. I know, and I've been there, all right, and a lot of these things that we gave you advice on, it's mistakes that I've made in the past, all right? This is where this one's coming from. You met, you qualified for this, you're excited, and you just want to train. Like, you want to come in and just do all the movements. You want to work out, then work out again, then come back and work out again, and then come back and work out again, and do the muscle-ups, and do bar muscle-ups, then lift heavy, then go for a run, and then do a burpee emon. Because, like, you're motivated, and it's awesome to work out when you're motivated. Like, there's no better feeling. Where, like, you just have that, like, tunnel vision, that you're locked in, you're ready to go. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, 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 do not do it. Now, I'm, I am going to give real physical workout advice that you can do. I'm not telling you stuff to go put yourself, wrap yourself in a sleeping bag on your bed and, and recover. I'm not, I am going to tell you to train. But don't all of the sudden start adding and adding and adding volume because this is my line that I use every time we're close to a competition. The, the most likely thing you're not that to happen between now and quarterfinals is you will get hurt. You will not get fitter. You will not get better at CrossFit. You can get hurt. I want that to scare you a little bit. That if you all of a sudden start training extra volume, the if you liked odds, the odds are you'll get hurt. You're not going to get better. It was more of a temptation when there was a bigger gap between Open and quarterfinals. There was like a two to almost three month gap one year, right? Where it was like March, May or something like that. Yeah, you guys did, you and Kathleen qualified in October. Yeah. Met that October Open. Oh, right. And then right before COVID, you did the, in you did March. The age, it was like yeah. literally a week before. Dude, that was awful. You know how many mock weekends we ended <laughs> up doing <laughs> and how much volume we added in? So, and that is fun. It's fun to sign up, sign up, qualify for something months ahead because you can get a lot better across it in a three month period. Uh, three weeks is not enough to do anything. It's just not. But, but there is something you can do that can get you better for the weekend, all right? It's not sexy. Make your lifestyle as perfect as you can. I promise if you sleep, eat perfect, when I say eat perfect, like you don't have a cheat snack until this is over, all right? None of this Saturday, Sunday shit, right? You don't drink alcohol, all right? You put a lot of time, effort, thought, energy into your recovery post-workout, you get extra mobility sessions in, you get extra rolling out sessions, extra accessory work sessions, and you try <laughs> to avoid stress. Those those factors, your lifestyle factors, bring up reset, all right? Hydration, alcohol, sleep, exercise, all this stuff. If you are dialed into that stuff between now and quarterfinals, that will do more for you than anything you do in the gym because we're just too close to it. Um, I will give you some physical things you can do. So don't worry. I want you to work out. I want you to train because I think that's mentally important as just as it is physical. But if you are going to try to get the most out of the quarterfinals three and a half weeks from now, all right, step ones, two, three are lifestyle based, not workout based. Man, you should have told me before this weekend because I really let myself go <laughs> food wise. Now I'm going to have to start eating clean uh, now. I well, guess. Sam, this podcast doesn't come out till tomorrow. So <laughs> you can do whatever you want today. But the second you actually hear this podcast tomorrow, um, <laughs> you're right, though. That, that, that does make a difference. So I will, I will do that. Because I do know this, right? Reset that leads up to the open. I see people changing mentally, physically in their workouts, like just like, the look in their eyes after two, three weeks of reset. 
Like when they, they like because everyone's motivated, you're you're perfect. You have seven great days in a row, fourteen great days in a row. You start looking different. You're confident, right? Mm. That can happen mm. between now and quarterfinals. Okay. Um, so I I do I want that to be the number one focus. All right. So once you figure out your schedule, your logistics, right? You talk to your coach. You talk to your gym owner. Now the lifestyle. So. Let's talk about what most people do want to talk about, the physical component. What can you do physically between now and quarterfinals? Um, I don't want to scare you, like I said earlier, into just getting hurt. Like, that, what can I do? Um, skill work, high intensity, speed load, and a mock weekend, okay? So my first thing I would think is most important is skill work. So everything across it to me is a skill. A bar-facing burpee is a skill. So no matter what day you come in, all right, no matter what the movements are in that day, I want you to view every movement as a skill. What can you do to make it more efficient so that when you are in a hard workout, the efficiency can help you last longer? Uh, what are some skills, Sam, based on things that you've done in the past in quarterfinals or let's say any stage beyond the open that, oh, man, I wish I had worked on this movement a little bit more Um and usually the movements that you're worst at are the ones you can make the biggest gains at. Mm. So what what are a couple of things that you just remember looking back on, like, all right, that if I work on this more, this workout will go better next year? You know, I was just thinking about the high box jumps, the high box jump overs. Like, even that is a skill that um, I'm really bad at that I know if I practiced a little bit, I could get, I could get better at in terms of foot placement, repetition, economy of motion, like all of those things. I remember I had not practiced any of those and it felt really like after I did the workout, I was like, wow, I, I could have made that a lot better if I had just practiced that. Yeah. Better. And yeah, that's, that's a great example because it's not something that you need a seven week progression on. Like sometimes like I'm watching people out in the gym right now do dumbbell thrusters. And like, to me, that's a skill. How do I hold it? When, what's the difference? How do I get it to my shoulders? Can I squat clean thruster it? Right. Um, the first couple of times you do them, they feel like crap. But the second time you do them, it's just more natural because you have developed skill, right? Skill is only developed by repetition. It's not by thinking. It's not by watching videos. You have to go out and do them. So just think about a movement that you're not comfortable with, a high box jump over, which I don't like it either. Uh, a wall walk, um, a wall facing shirt, tan stand push up, right? And then you can get into some of the harder stuff, bar muscles, frame muscles. It doesn't need to be they feel good right now. It's just like every little session you put in, it's going to develop the skill a little further so that on game day, you are just a little more proficient with it. Um, every day you come in, the movements on the board are a skill that you can work on. Now, high intensity, speed and load, okay? I would, instead of coming into every bison wad and trying to get my best time and trying to beat this person... I would try to look at it as like quadrants of a workout, like, you know, four sections of a workout. Um, or if, if, if the number game is not for you, look at it as like, how am I starting? How am I finishing? And try to really practice intensity. Um, example, we have a workout on Tuesday this week. Uh, it's going to be the hardest workout of the week, in my opinion. It's got muscle ups, pogo burpees, and a lot of wall balls. Instead of being like, can I get this workout done under the cap? Can I beat this person? I would look at it as how fast can I get a round done? And then go rest a minute. I don't care. Rest 30 seconds. And that like that intensity I think needs to be practiced between now and and your um quarterfinal weekend is practicing the speed in which you need to be at. It's not just about can I do it five rounds in a row? That's something you have to train throughout the year. But can I actually move at this speed within a round? And what do I feel like after that round? Because a lot of times in a competition setting, an open setting, a quarterfinal setting, you move faster than you probably think you're going to because of the adrenaline. You're pumped up. You're like, fuck pacing. I'm going for it. You should practice that. Like, wh how high does, how fast does that heart rate get to a point you just can't breathe anymore? Um, those are things that I think that you can, when I say high intensity, my favorite format, you can't really do this in a class setting, but you could try is equal work rest ratios. Um, so I did something similar this morning where I went really hard for three, four rounds faster than I would ever go in a workout. And then whatever amount of time it took me, I would rest that much time. And then I would try to do it again and then do it again and then do it again. That is like practicing really fast movement. Thoughts on that? Yeah. I, uh, this is something I haven't really done so much of, but I, it, I think that makes sense. I, I think if you, 
some of that is imagining that when you're doing that, that you're actually in the quarterfinal yeah, workout, like right. pretending yeah. in your mind. That always gets me the adrenaline pumping a little bit more if I'm like, okay, I'm going to imagine this is like my quarterfinal right. workout. I got to do this at the intensity, yep. at the speed, at the way I'm going to be moving for it. Mm -hmm. um, it always adds a little bit of extra adrenaline to it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, Wednesday's workout, we have a run, kettlebell swing, handstand push up kettlebell swing, handstand push-up. Like, you could be like, all right, I'm going to jot these runs because I don't really care about my time in the workout. But when I, I'm going to get to the kettlebells and handstands, I'm going to try to get that that section of it done as fast as I can just to practice the speed. And then I'll go out for my second run. I don't really care that much. Then I get a rest. Like, those are little things that you could do. You could find one movement mm -hmm. of a workout. We're like, hey, I'm doing these. I'm broken. I'm going as fast as I can. The other stuff I'm just going to kind of jog through. I think there's a lot of value in that. Mm. Um, lifting heavy. So high intensity is not just how fast, how many reps. It's it's lifting heavy. Um, I would definitely try to get some heavy days in. Should you go for a max? The the professional coaches do have a lot of times have their coaches hit max lifts the week before, um, or about ten days before the CrossFit Games. Um, on our level, I'd be a little careful with that. I would probably stop yourself at ninety percent of any lift you do between now and quarterfinals. I would not go above ninety percent. Um, that brings me to the last part of what you could physically do, and it's the mock weekend. Um, Sam did eleven of these. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like uh, a few years ago when we had we had months to work with and just turn these guys into to mutants. But um, a mock weekend. So what is a mock weekend? We basically create five to six workouts that you do over the course of five to six days. It is basically what you will be doing quarterfinal weekend. So I can say this right now at Bison, right? We, we will be doing this. Um, I haven't told everyone yet, but the not not this upcoming week. So this I keep I have to keep remembering when this podcast is coming out. Not this week, but next week, um, Thursday and Friday, Bison Wads will be mock quarterfinal weekend uh, workouts. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. And then I am going to open up the gym at 11 a.m. Saturday after the Saturday classes and do another workout. And then I'm going to try to get people here on Sunday. Um, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the following Monday because now we're now, I just don't, I don't know if it's necessary, but basically the purpose of this is to put you in this competitive mindset. I just told you guys to come up with your logistical plan. What are you going to do? All right. Let's, let's pretend that you're a morning workout person. And because of logistics, you're going to have to come in at night and do these workouts that Thursday, Friday, you should be coming in at night. And how does your body respond? Why? Do I care how you do in the workouts? Nope. Not even a little bit. If you crush it, don't care. If you get crushed, don't care. I want you to figure out your your flow. So if you are a morning person and now you're coming in at night, what are you eating for breakfast? Are you going to come in in the morning and just maybe move your body all right, to kind of keep yourself in that routine? What are you eating at lunch? What are you eating at 4 o'clock if you're running at 6 o'clock? Because, again, if you don't figure that out until the day of, you're – throwing a dart at a dartboard with a blindfold on and you're just, you're hoping for the best. Um, and it's okay if you make a mistake mock weekend, because if anything, you kind of want to make a mistake, you know, um, what, what is it like to do these repeated high intensity efforts? Do you last? I'll say this. Like, I think some people shouldn't do it because they're afraid of getting hurt or they're tweaked up right now. But I would say this, if you're, that's fine. If you make the decision not to do it, you don't want to get hurt. That's fine. But if you get hurt this weekend, it just probably means you'll get hurt quarterfinal weekend. And this is probably a safer environment to do that in. And, you know, that might be a decision that you shouldn't do it because you're just not ready. I know a very good athlete right now that's probably not doing it because he's he's not bouncing back from workouts and he's afraid of getting hurt. And that would be an incredibly smart and hard decision. Sam, give me some feedback on some of these mock weekends that you've done. Do you like them? Do you think they're important? I think they're important. I think they're helpful. Uh, I think there is a skill to knowing how your body responds when you do a high intensity workout and then you do another one and your recovery time is short and you have to be able to figure out how you recover and perform again. Yes, this is verging from fitness into the competitive aspect of things, but most of us straddle that line to a certain degree. We want to see how competitive we can be and we don't do this every week or or every month or every year, but that's what competitions are for. And that's this is the the big one. This is the big competition. This is quarterfinals. This is in your local comp at you know X Y you know just gym. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is where you're ranked up against everybody else in your age group in the in the country in the world. So 
if you want to see how you do, you must replicate that environment. You must see how you do. You must dry run it. You must pre-vis. Like visualization, I have never heard anyone on any level of high level success. And I've just been interviewing and talking to a bunch of people. Uh, everyone pre-visualizes. Everybody yeah. for success. If you ask anyone, athlete, um, successful person in life, they're like, I visualize what I do before I do it. Well, this is the perfect way of visualizing what you're going to be doing for quarterfinals. Uh, you know, working out at the at night. You know, eating, getting ready, hitting it again the next day. You know, maybe one. You know, I remember we would do one, and then we'd have to wait a couple hours, and then do another one. Yeah. Like. Yep. Like how your body responds to that. And how you manage that is how you're going to manage it in quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. And and so, if anything, it's worth taking that time to do it. Is it risky? Like you said, there's there's always risk when you're you're chasing a relatively high intensity uh, stimulus in a workout. But you have to be smart, and you also have to listen to yourself, and you also have to see what you can do. Right. And and that's that's what being an athlete's all about. Yeah, I mean it is risky. Um, so is preseason football. You know, you see it every year. Guys get hurt for the entire season because they got hurt in a meaningless week two preseason game, and then like, oh, we should cancel preseason. You know, what Sam said earlier, it hit the nail on the head. This is sport. You might get hurt uh, mock weekend, and if you can't accept that, don't, hey, just don't do it. That's fine. But also question what 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 you're doing. Like, you know, we, what's the first thing we said? What is your goal? Right. If your goal is to have fun and this was the goal to make quarterfinals, it's probably not as important to come in and do the mock weekend if you're afraid of getting hurt. But if you have a perform, I want to hit this metric, or I really want to see where I stand so next year I can go after this, or I want to make semifinals, um, I think it's important that you put some effort into getting to at least some of these. Um, I'm more into what is the what is it like if you have to switch up your workout times. Like for the uh, Sunday session, it's going to be after open gym. So you're not coming at 8. You're coming at 9.30 to warm up. Uh, how do you warm up on your own? That's something that a lot of athletes don't have any experience with. You know, we're not doing a group warm up at any of these quarterfinal workouts. So what are you going to do? You know, like, how do you warm up? Do you know how to? You should, you know, if you've been doing CrossFit for a few years. Um, so you can view it that way. It's just like, what is this going to be like? Um, because, again, we have 50 people that have never done this before. So it, there's an significant advantage to those that have done this before you know exactly what's coming so um that that's the purpose of the mock weekend if you can't make it don't stress out okay really don't don't stress out it's not going to move the needle that much uh, lastly okay focus on elements not your scores okay don't get obsessed and don't get upset if you have a bad few workouts if this person beats you if you couldn't rx this if you couldn't go level one here so you, oh i'm i suck no Focus on elements in your workout, right? Your pacing, your breathing, your mobility, um, your ability to keep, stay mentally clear in a workout. You know, like um, the, the more I talk to Rafi and the more I'm working with him, like that that's a PED. That is a performance enhancing drug. If you are really good at avoiding those negative thoughts in the workout, um, it literally makes you better. And I have a couple examples I might bring up down the road with with, with him, um, still working through some stuff. But I, I've noticed significant difference in my workouts where I'm really tuned into my mental state, um, good and bad. Like if I forget it or I let it kind of spiral out of control, my workouts get worse. So focus on that. Like what are some things you have to practice it? Just like you practice your Olympic lifts, you have to practice your headspace in a workout. Sam, do you get like get into that or not really? Absolutely. I just was thinking about this morning's workout. Yep. yep. I you were not happy. When I, you <laughs> I wasn't, and you know, I was. I was. It's the workout was not fun, but yeah. what I hated was that I tapped out mentally in the middle of the workout, which yep. which really bothers me. So I'll be here Thursday for that workout. That doesn't make me feel better. I will okay. be here. I will be here. Uh, okay. Because I know because I don't want to be here. So <laughs> I, it's important that you did the workout though, I'm saying. Right. You should give yourself some credit. Okay, but the issue is, like for example, it's one where there's no rest. It's uh, very briefly, it's 100 burpee pull-ups. Every minute it's either um, eight box jumps or the other minute it's eight step-ups. And so you're not resting and there's a 20-minute cap. And so I didn't know going in where I was going to score with it. But going in, it was pretty clear. Like I thought, well, if I did my like my box work my box work within 30 seconds I could do five burpee pull-ups 
in the remaining 30 seconds and I'd get done by time cap. Hmm. And it turns out that I'm very slow and I cannot, <laughs> and I was getting maybe 40, but then, and so maybe I'd get like two or three burpee pull-ups. And, and once I figured out I'm not going to finish, mm -hmm. my mind just fell apart. And instead of saying, you know what, let me at least get a goal here, three to four burpee pull-ups per round or whatever it is, you know, try to finish. Uh, I just kept slowing down and slowing down. And so what became, uh, and the wheels just totally fell off. Mm -hmm. And I got such a horrible number, at least for what I thought I could do. Yep. And Susan, who was next to me, she knew she wasn't going to finish either, but she just kept going. Yeah. Like she had a Susan's much- very mentally tough. Yeah, she had a very yeah. good mental attitude and she kept moving. And she finished like 20 plus burpee pull-ups over me. Wow. And Nice, Susan. <laughs> And so in retrospect, I was like, I did not help myself by giving up. And that is the kind of mental challenge that any of these workouts mm -hmm. you have to look at. Like you said, it's not the score. Because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to finish. Right. It was, did I do what I could do? And I, and I did not. And yep. so I think that that's where every workout, every focus should be on. Like, listen, if you don't get the score that you want, what is it that you could take away from that workout that you did yep. right so you can become better? I mean, what Rafi would say in that instance, I don't want to speak for him, but what he has said to me, because I've, I've reflected on similar struggles with him in a few sessions, 23.2 um, in particular, is he goes, the fact that you can say that so soon after your workout too, um, like he goes like, that's it. Like that, that's the reflection you know, like that is what you want because if you can reflect on that so soon after a workout, I bet it helps you in a future workout. And that's what we want. So like in these workouts coming up, whether they're great for you, whether they're terrible for you, can you really be present with what your thoughts are in the workout? Can you reflect on them? And then can you be honest with yourself and ask yourself, did I do even worse because of my, my inability to control my negative thoughts? And if the answer is yes, which if you're listening to this, the answer is yes. A lot of your bad workouts are because you were in a bad spot mentally, all right? And we're empathetic. We feel bad. We'll try to help you out. But you are the one that's going to fix it. It's not somebody else. So now that we know this, can you apply this to a future workout? Can you come back in the next day or whenever you train again? Sam, the next time you train, can you come in with a better mindset if things start to go off? Because now what just happened today is now it's a positive. You hit adversity, something went wrong, and now it's making you better. That is the purpose of things that go wrong. They should make us better. So we really shouldn't be that upset when bad things happen. So if you struggle with the wall balls on Tuesday and you get hit in the face, you got to break them up, right? Let's reflect on it. What could you do different? Was it your mind? Was it your body? Was it both? Now we have uh, uh, some, we, you know, you have to acknowledge the issue and then move forward. That's how you're going to get better at them. It's not going to just be punch the wall ball every time there's wall balls, you know? Um, you know, uh, so th that's, that's where I just want you get to wrap up the, the prep for quarterfinals. I know most of this was uh, not workout based, but I, I really, I feel strongly about this. There are little things you can do, but I would say 90% of your prep for quarterfinals is between your ears. Um, it's not sexy, but that we're three and a half weeks and you need a deload, right? After that mock weekend that I just talked about, we are 10 days away and I'm going to suggest, you know, come work out, stay in your routine, but no more really high effort stuff. Uh, you, you got to kind of preserve as much energy, as, as much fuel as you can eat, sleep, all this stuff. Um, so just be be aware that that's what comes after the mock weekend. That's what comes about seven to 10 days prior to your, your big event is less working out, more rest. And so you're really looking at just two and a half weeks of prep, really. Um, not, not even that much. So if you guys can just dial into the mental side, I think it's going to help you out as much as anything. Sam, any closing thoughts? No, that's it. Let's get after it, man. Let's do it, baby. Thank you guys. See you next week. Thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.